So polarity, it's tools to use to create magnetism. I mean, I, I try to keep it really simple because if we get too detailed about it, people think, oh, well, if I'm kind of a tomboy, does that mean I'm not polarized? No, it, it's not about that. It's about um, respecting the differences between men and women, which we talked about before. And for a woman, polarity skills would include ways to express a problem, a feeling, um, something that's going on to her man without blaming him without using you always in the sentence and instead turning it around and making it about like her emotional state right now. She's either sad, angry, if, if something is not going the way she wants, she can be responsible for herself and the feeling that she's having and express to her husband, let's say um, that she's feeling sad. And, or and permissively too, which a lot of feminists don't like this, but part of pol polarized communication includes asking first. Like, um, I'm not if my if I see my husband, I'm not going to run right up to him and say, "I'm so angry, I'm so sad." That would not be polarized communication because that would be penetrating him with my emotions. Instead, mm -hmm. I would ask him, "Is this a good time to share something with you? If mm -hmm. not, when would be a good time?" And then he mm -hmm. could say. He'd say, yeah, now's a good time. Okay, may I share something about how I'm feeling? Yes, please do. I feel so sad. And then state the problem without making him wrong or bad or ashamed of something he did, but really taking responsibility. So I'm, I'm just giving you one example of how I utilize polarity in my mentorship because I'm helping the women with skills to change their language, find feminine ways to communicate their issues, their problems, their feelings mm -hmm. with men, because otherwise a man will tend to get defensive, feel hurt that she's blaming him for something. She's not taking responsibility for her feelings. That, and now he's got to defend himself and tell her why. So, yeah. And it just, usually what happens, it just turns into this big argument. So this is- It a escalates. Way, uh -huh. Yeah, it escalates. And a lot of times the one person will just completely shut down and yeah. then there's no um, opportunity for a connection in that kind of situation. So does that- um, One, does one that problem I could see there is that the woman, you're telling a woman, this is how you should communicate. And then, oh, they're now, oh, well, now I expect- my husband to communicate with me the same way. Oh, um, interesting. So do you? Oh, do oh, you mean um, like now that like now asking the... permission? And... No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that would be so emasculating. That would be so emasculating. Right, right. But, but you, have you heard of? Woman, this... Have you heard of uh, nonviolent communication? Yes, um, there are some. There, there's some benefit with nonviolent communication, yeah. but it's not polarized. Nonviolent communication doesn't distinguish between if the man is speaking or the woman is speaking, that's right. why there's a problem. It's the same thing with the five love languages. Five love mm. languages are not polarized. Right. Every woman should have all five of those love languages. Maybe, maybe there are a couple that are, she has a little bit more than the other, but men, the men's love languages are respect and physical intimate um, relations right. with his wife and and right. that's just the way it is men do not need to receive compliments um, and do not need to receive gifts that's the, the right. giving is masculine receiving is feminine and this is so triggering to so many people but it, it, i don't speak so... to those people i'm speaking <laughs> to the ones that are ready to hear this and want to learn yeah and is this part of something that you think is an objective truth or do you think, hey, oh, yeah. whatever works for you works for you? Oh no! Or do you think because... ultimately it won't work for them if that's if that's what they're insisting on? No. Okay, that's such a good question, Andrew. Thank you for bringing this up because you'll hear couples say, "Well, the, you know, I'm in a relationship where my wife makes all the decisions. She tells me what to wear. She oh, she makes sure that my." dentist appointment is scheduled and I get there on time and she's always checking and making sure. And so that's, that's an inverse in the, that polar, the polarity in that relationship is reversed. If that works, I, who am I to say, change your life, change your polarity, do, go for it, do it. But 
to answer your, your other question about objective truth, biologically, we have instincts that are not conditioned by society. These are built into us. We're created by God this way. So uh -huh. in that sense, they are objective. Um, the polarity that I teach is objective because of biological imperative um, functions and the way that we were created. So that's why I'm saying like the, what I, what I talk about is not for everyone because if someone mm -hmm. thinks that there are a million thousand bazillion different genders, they're not going <laughs> to, they're not going to like what I'm right, talking right. about. Very much. <laughs> they're, 